All right, so let me do this quick video about this, this these Pioneer split uh, air condition units, and it, you know I look like a lot of people uh, toward YouTube to get some ideas on how to do things, installations, whatever. But obviously, <laughs> I'm a bit mechanically inclined. So anyway, I have my gauges on here, and I, I pull the vacuum. And I'm just checking these lines. Of course, what happened here was what I wanted to show you was these lines that are on what you now see the left part of the of the inside unit is air conditioned. They went along this gully here. When it comes in the box, it comes along here. So it goes in the opposite direction. And then my application, I wasn't running the lines in the back of the unit. As most people sent them through the wall, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to come down the wall. So I've seen one guy in a few videos that I watched, and he had his done that way. And if you look on the side of the case, there's a cutout on both sides. So you could theoretically run the lines along this little space here and then come out this side. But in order, but it, it's just application. My particular um, run was going to be on the right side. That was the only way to where you know place to put it. And I had a a theory based on what, everything that I saw, and I and I knew that there was a space here to cut out. So I cut it out and I tried to bend these lines. Now the problem wasn't in the high side line. If you you look at these two lines, one has a spring around it that was for bending. That's that they put that in from the factory. And then you have the small, the high side. So right now, I just have my, my vacuum is already in there and I just closed the loop off. So I have a, I have a, I had an evacuator pump just to check for leaks. And then I hooked my gauge up and then I disconnected the pump and I just let it sit. So it's been about five minutes and, and it's holding a perfect vacuum. So I'm really happy about that. Problem is this spring. This spring, what happened is, I guess that they did it from the factory either to help people bending the the, um, the copper pipe or they did it when they bent it, from, bent, bent it from the factory. So they bent it over to this side, right going that way. And the problem is, is that you already have a bend in the pipe. Now, this bend right here is the original bend so it comes down and then it bends once and then it goes into this track that's the problem when you're trying to bend it to the other side because once it's bent that's the problem it's not bent this pipe is not hard to bend but once it's bent that's when you're going to run into the problem trying to bend the section that's already bent which is what i tried to do and I put a little crease in it, and I was careful, and I even had a little pipe bender, which, you know, is kind of useless in this application, but... So I put a little bend in it, and I'm not happy about it, but I looked, I checked it out, I ran a, these tools, I bought this tool, I'm going to show you this tool, so hold on a second. So I bought this tool and I think I spent 50 bucks on it or whatever, which I thought it was kind of a cool tool. And what you do is you stick these lines, these plastic lines inside the line and it prevents it from kinking. Great. Awesome. Think it would work, but not on this application because the lines are already bent. Once the lines are bent, you're not getting that through. You have to put that through before the lines are bent. So just to give you an idea, if you want to go try to buy this tool, if you're going to buy it for other applications, I could always use it later on because we bend pipe. But as far as uh, using it for this, no, don't waste your money. Of course, on the other hand, if you had to bend the, um, the, the lines, the kit line to come out, and you wanted to straighten them out first and run that through there, that would probably work good. So maybe you should buy that, that, that tool. Anyway, uh, so this is going to be a problem. So my suggestion is if you have to do something like I'm doing or if you just want to turn them to run them out in the back make sure freaking make sure that you bend the line on the section that's not already bent you're just going to have to leave the bend wherever it is because once you try to go in the other direction 
your sunk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to, um, you know, put the insulation around to clean it up, get it all, make, no, make sure it's still not leaking, everything's fine. And then I'm going to drop it and show you how it, uh, it, it, it drops out of the unit uh, when you're running the lines on the side, which nobody really talked about. But I did see a picture of it. So here's it from the back side. I just got it laying on a plastic uh, can so that it doesn't, it doesn't get damaged. And we'll move on from there. Okay, just want to show you nice and clean, neat, neatly wrapped, and um, insulated. And I pretty much got it, you know, kind of flat there. So everything looks good. Still holding strong at 30 inches. Very good news. And we're going to see how this works. We're going to see, we're going to put gauges on this. We're going to see how this is going to respond. Having uh, uh, what, what looks like about a 30, 35% restriction in the low side. I don't know how that's going to work. And, you know, worst case scenario, I take it off. I take it apart. And I have to either solder a line in or somehow connect some line. But I'm going to have to make the line before I put it in because that's the problem. you got a 90 degree bend here. Uh, coming from the other direction. That's way too much. I mean if you just started with a straight line and you wanted to do a 90 and maybe another 90 You might be okay, but to do that come from the other side and eh, that's too much to ask So let's see what happens when we hook this up So there's one other thing I wanted to tell you about before I I uh, put this up uh, mount this up Is that if you look at how short this line is this this low side line the thick lights side is low side it would be weird for you to come out to where this bend is. You'd have to go back. If you were going through a wall, you'd have to come through on the back side. And you would have to bend that approximately here on the other side of the wall, which I think is, yeah, that's a little crazy. I mean, that's too close to the fitting to bend that, you know, that close. So... I don't know what guys are doing, how they're, you know, depending on what size wall you're going through. If you're going through a really, really thin wall, maybe it won't make a difference. But I could see you trying to mount this thing on a thick wall and it only being maybe, hold on a second, let me measure it. Okay, I'm back. So it's about 11 inches. So if you've got an 8 or 9 inch wall, you are going to have a real hard time when you come to the, near this fitting. If you have to bend this near that fitting, to me, no good. Not a good idea. So I'm really glad that I had to mount mine on the side so that I could come out and make the pre-make these bends here. Um, at, you know, before it's mounted and, and they're coming down nice and straight down the wall and I can get to them real easy. I'm going to put the cover over it and I'll be able to service them and test them and everything. And that, should, that part of it should work out really good. The bad side is... For anyone that's buying one of these units, if you have to replace this inside unit, you got to go through the, the bending process again, which uh, I think might be the worst part of the job, but, uh, you know, most, most risky. But anyway, let's see what happens later on. All right, as we, all, as, as we already know, this is easy to mount. Uh, it's not heavy. I think it weighs like 28, 30 pounds, whatever. So the bracket's uh, pretty simple, and that's been going over before. But here's the lines coming out of the right side. I picked this kit from Supply House. I think it was like 80, 90 bucks, like a 12 foot kit. And I just put the uh, 90 degree there and ran the um, wire, the cable line and the drain line. And there you go. It's going right down. It's going to go into the floor. So obviously this is not cleaned up yet. I got to put some kind of cap on there and clean that up. But just to show you, I got the um, PVC. Um, if you see that coming out of the ceiling there, and I got some just something that's blocked the hole up so nothing gets in there in the meantime until I cover it. But lines coming out, electric line. Um, 
I encased it in uh, some flexible uh, shielding and then your drain line. So drain line's coming down. I piped in electrical to a box and put the breakout box in and now that's coming down and here are the lines coming in where they're supposed to, I hope. Because <laughs> they're not going to be moved. But um, yeah, that's it. Uh, it's all hooked up and I just got to figure out how to uh, get a good uh, vacuum on there. I think what guys are doing is what I tried to do at first, which is to hook up a gauge set with your pump and you're not pumping anything. You're stopping right here. You're stopping at the end because the valve is preventing the vacuum from getting in. Unless they make a special adapter, I'm going to go look for it and then this will be kind of edited out. But let's see what happens. Um, they, they talked about a special adapter, but I think the adapter they were talking about was changing the quarter inch to three eighths. I don't think it has a special valve depressor in it. That's my guess. So let's see what we come up with. Anyway, um, you know, the rest of it's done. <sighs> Got my breakout box hooked up. The lines are coming in. This is a horrible, horrible design. These lines should not be on this uh, cover. They should be coming in through the side here or on the, underneath and then the cover should go over it because you have to pull the lines in order to get the cover off. That's ridiculous. So I don't know what Medea was thinking about when they made this. I just don't understand. They should have put something over here uh, and you put the lines in and you run the wire and you put a cover on top of it. It doesn't make sense this way but this is how they did it so you have to kind of bend these lines carefully. Alright, let's see what happens next. So now let's get to the big headache at hand. Um, if nobody's been, nobody's shown anything like this, so I don't know if you could see in there. So in there obviously is a Schrader valve. Uh, one guy on one uh, video I was watching, he had this tool which I think I might have to get. It's like 20 bucks and, what it, and I think what it does, I'm not sure, uh, I think it depresses, you, you're able to pull the Schrader out because you hook your gauges and your evacuator pump up, up to this um, line and you're not going through. So I don't know what these guys are doing. A standard, standard um, line end that threads on to the, the, um, the, the compressor side, right? Uh, the low side. If you look inside here, I don't know if you can see this. You see how the Schrader depressor is inside, which I don't know if that's even a depressor. You can see that. Um, and then you go look in here and it's inside. So they don't touch. So uh, what winds up happening is you're not, when you hook up your line, you're not getting into the lines. You're, you're just, um, Unless you take the Schrader out, which is what I did. I took the valve out and I hooked up my line uh, to it and I turned on the pump and I was able to establish by leaving it there for about, I think it was about 20 minutes to a half hour. Uh, I evacuated it for about 10-15 minutes and I left it on for about a half hour and um, it, it, it doesn't have any leaks because the, the vacuum's not moving. but. The problem is, how do you keep the vacuum in the line? You can't, you can't evacuate it while the Schrader valve's in, and if you take it out to pump it down, you have to put it back in again, which the vacuum's going to come out. So, this is an issue, and I think what guys are doing, hold on. So, I bought this tool, and what this tool does is it depresses the Schrader valve. So, this knob here, you turn it, you, you put it on to where it's not touching the valve, and then after it's on and it's snug up, then you turn it in just enough to depress the valve. Don't go too far. Uh, what I did was I ran my evacuator pump with it with the valve closed. And I can hear in the um, in my pump, it makes a noise when the, when the 
vacuum is tight. So after I established that the vacuum was good throughout the line, I, t I depressed the valve, I turned the, the knob, depressed the valve, and you could hear the, then the pump start to go, you know, a little stronger. And so it's, it's sucking the air and everything out of the lines at that point. So at that point I just stopped. And, and so some guys think that there's not enough space uh, going through the uh, Schrader valve. Uh, I don't think that's that critical. So I'm going to pump it down and test it with my valve on and see if it holds the vacuum, which it should because it already did without the Schrader in. The only thing that will be leaking, possibly leaking, is this tool. And uh, then I'm going to open up the valves and charge it up. So I'm continuing to evacuate. I got I, I I shut it down after like 10 minutes and I checked it for another five to see if it would hold. Now I'm going to do a second cycle of the vacuum uh, for about another 10 minutes. And then I'm going to shut it down, leak test, test it one more time, and I'm just going to suck a vacuum in it if it hold if it held. So then I'm just going to back the valve out to where the valve shuts in the system. And once the valve shut, I'll know that I have a solid vacuum in the lines. And then I'm going to open up the gas and uh, let it charge through the uh, compressor side. So that's going to wrap it up right there. And then I'm, I, I think I'm going to check pressure. I really want to check pressure, so I'm going to use this, this uh, gauge to check pressure. Okay, so I just started this up, running it. Um, low side temperature, low side pressure is about a hundred and fifteen. I'm gonna say hundred and fifteen, which actually is supposed to be the sweet spot for these um, um, these many splits. Uh, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my um, depress my valve here to open up my valve. And that should allow me to take this off. So as you can see, this is connected, working, working pretty good. Got one complaint. I hope it's going to be solved by the um, app. I just ordered the uh, dongle for the uh, Wi-Fi setup. And uh, here's the elbow at a 90 degree. And, and back and back of here is the... Um, the, the connections, the line connections, so it's very easy to service. You just take take these plastic molding off, and it just goes down into the floor, and that's basically it. So, yeah, so that, that came pretty good. I mean, I think it came pretty good, and that's that's much as you could do. Pretty easy installation as far as this is concerned. Hardest part is messing with the lines, um, but I think if I had better tooling and stuff, I might have had an easier job with that, but um, yeah, maybe next time if there ever is one. But yeah, you can you can mount it on the right, you can mount it on the left, you can mount it behind. Uh, I just be careful about the distance in the back of the wall if you go through the wall and in terms of bending those uh, lines. So that's it. Pretty pretty straightforward for you know somebody who's accustomed to working on air conditioning systems and stuff like that so I guess I have that edge all right to go over a couple things I'm going to take final uh, low side reading it's the only reading I could take unfortunately so I got my valve connection in and I just have to turn this so I can get a reading on the gauge so I'm going to turn it carefully so that valves open opens a little enough to make there you go so the gauge is reading now got 150 on the low side which is a little bit high uh, let's see where this goes over time so yeah I was running a little high um, I'm about a 155 on the uh, on the low side that's maybe 10 pounds high uh, from the highest range and um, there's your cap. You have to. Put, I would suggest putting a seal in the cap because you could get some leakage from the Schrader valve. It's always a good idea to have that sealed. So that's basically it. Um, 
I might have to take some Freon out. I'm going to have to check on that spec. That might be a little too high. But electric lines run into the box. Metal line coming in for your wires. Uh, wires coming down. I left a little extra slack in the box just in case so that I can pull the, um, the this ridiculous uh, box off. And then the line's coming in. So that's it. I'm going to I'm going to uh, insulate these lines when I'm all finished, and that's a wrap. That's your hookup for the uh, Pioneer Mini Split 12,000 BTU. So once you get the Wi-Fi working, you have your little Wi-Fi light there, and then you can use the app to control it, which I guess might be easier. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much the same, but you can control it remotely, so it's good if you want to shut it off. Uh, when you leave or whatever and then turn it on before you go back uh, but they cool pretty fast so I guess it would be more efficient that way and that's it I guess that's the end of the uh, video uh, on the uh, Pioneer Mini Split uh, a pretty straightforward installation the only thing I would make a deal about was the lines but uh, I got it running and it's not leaking and um, I did basically everything that was supposed to be done. I used that nylog, a uh, little bit of that stuff on the lines and tightened them up with the torque spec. And so that's it. It's a wrap. Uh, pretty, pretty uh, good job. And uh, I'm happy with the unit so far. I might see long term problem with these. Um, these units are so quiet. I mean, you probably can't hear it out my phone, but it's running on high fan and you really can't even hear it. Um, they're so quiet and I think part of the reason why is there's not a tremendous amount of airflow so I could see that being an issue in the long term um, it's obviously going to tend to develop a little bit of mold and mildew and whatever uh, over time uh, so the only thing you could do to prevent that while you're using it I guess is try to always run the fan a little bit uh, after the compressor shuts off so as it starts to cool, but then you're going to put some humidity into the air, which is probably not something you're going to like if it's really hot. I don't know. It's catch-22 on that. There's just not a lot of airflow coming out. It does do a great job cooling. I got about 480 square feet, and it cools really fast. I would say probably an hour and a half. We could drop like four or five degrees, so that's incredible. Um, I'm probably oversized, uh, although this is what the spec called for. Uh, but that's basically it and it's been working good and uh, it seems to be efficient the outside and the inside Unit are extremely quiet as long as you hook them up right use your uh, noise uh, Dampening uh, they have like little rubber uh, Boots uh, that you mount underneath the outside unit and I use them and that's it and I also found on the um, on the instructions that the high side uh, the low side pressure could be as high as 155 that's what i'm running right now so i'm at the max of the scale but that's that's definitely in specs and acceptable so we're going to keep it that way and see how it runs maybe i'll just review it in like a year or whatever but that's that's your your uh, your pioneer mini splint um installation on the side uh it's i think it's well worth it because uh you know you can buy these things and the uh do it yourself uh it's not expensive uh, it's probably as much as an expensive window unit would cost if you get it on a good deal and uh probably easier to service but that's it so hope you guys uh have uh have good luck if you attempt this installation for somebody who's mechanical, not really hard at all. Thanks.